Dhamma galo gai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness or training in righteousness that the man of God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent to God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inherent great word of truth Glory be to my Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, the only Mashal Yahweh Elohim. The word Mashal meant to say the ruler, as sun rules the daylight and moon the night light. So in all the affairs of all the nations where Psalmist could write for us to understand in Psalms 22. That my Lord, my Rock, Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, is the Martial Lord of our God. As we noted several times in Exodus 15:18, the Lord of our God shall reign forever and forever. That is the key for us to understand that we are serving the Martial Lord of our God. Who has filled in this church age in all mannerism of the pleroma privileges for every individual believer in my Lord. The plural of pleroma privileges of Politima One, of the heavenly citizenship, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, the baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit, the completed canon of scripture, the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to teach to us daily as it is our duty and burden to carry our cross and follow my Lord daily. As it is the duty and burden of every individual pastor teacher to whom this bona fide gift has been given. To lamad, to teach. One Hebrew word is equivalent to two Greek words, mantano plus didasko. And Bible doctrine constantly affirms and talks about in the Gospels by our Lord's instruction to make them disciples, the closeness which was been brought by Apostle Paul to tell. Everyone should be presented perfect and complete in the holy presence of the Lord our God, for which cause we strive and we labor the special agnosomai labor of every pastor teacher. And for which cause, in Second Peter, Peter witnesses to Apostle Paul letters and says, those who are unlearned, and the Greek word goes to tell amatates, which Christ our Lord of our God says in Matthew 19, 28, to teach us a lesson for us, that every scribe will be instructed, because for the Pelagonesia, which is again going to become the new world, the world of righteousness, as we believers in Titus 3 5, which goes to say, the new world, by believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your soul is no longer the issue, but you have been born again, the spirit. We're talking about the human spirit, we are not talking about the Holy Spirit of the Lord our God. The palagenesia of the believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, makes him to become a new creation. He is a kinekatesis, the old things have been gone. The way how the new world will come has he answered in Matthew 19, 28. Again in Matthew chapter 12, 13 verses 39 or 42 and following, he goes to teach for us every scribe which has been instructed. Again, the word instructed is not the way how you can think that we have been given him some instructions to heed and to follow. No, the Greek word is matatoio. Again, it meant to say, if you haven't become the daily disciple for the word of the Lord our God, then you are no longer the technon son of Christ. Far less you could be the adult son to wear the manifestation of the glorious glory of the Lord our God, not ending up in disappointing misery or vanity of futility but telling to God the Father that we are here that the creation is rightfully awaiting for us and we are the adult sons of my Christ in complete maturity of the word of the Lord our God 
And that's the prayer of ultimate privileges given for us. And that's the work of every bona fide gifted pastor teacher to make you to be perfect and complete in all knowledge of the Lord's mind. There is no excuse for you. You may think you may have all infinite reasons to say my ministry will be weekly ones, my ministry will be monthly ones and that to every day minimum one hour. Not for 30 minutes or 40 minutes of hours in your Sunday services you may go back and look. You may find in the so-called nominal churches being made by this man according to the precepts and concepts of this man one hour. No, they don't even match for one hour. But doctrine says for us to understand the future events in the tribulation time of Revelation chapter 9. He gives a great warning for us from hour to day, from day to week, from week to month and from month to year. And if we could calculate that for us, if we, though the day is not been written in Revelation 9, we can find from hour to week, week to month and month to year, the four stages. But here for us in the church age, it is breath by breath being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine and become the matates believers of my Christ. And those who are unlearned, those who have not learned Bible doctrine, they cannot understand the gospel messages. What is that gospel messages which Christ our Lord of God has said? Every scribe. He doesn't say every believer who comes, but he says every scribe whom I've instructed in Matthew chapter 13. The same thing in relation with Psalms chapter 22, what we were looking. In verse number 22, if you go back and look, the great word which has been used, I will recount. The English may not give you that essence, but in the original Hebrew it calls for us to understand that I shall recount and the Hebrew word is Safar and that is what you can call them as scribe, a writer as Christ our Lord of God instructs in Matthew chapter 13 a writer, a scribe and for us given in this church age to be the believing kings and the believing priest and by default, every believer has been given the work of ambassadorship. And what is the duty of believing king? Come back and look in Deuteronomy 17, 18, which says, The one who shall sit upon the throne of the Lord's people, he shall make a copy of this law. And he shall write literally, Katab, the description work, the inscription work, the prescription work, and the subscription work, which we have noted long back in our tapes. If the pastor teacher doesn't describe to you the importance of becoming scribe and inscribe that upon your heart to be having that fear at least once of when we leave this earth we should kneel down and write the Bible in the translation whichever you may have because you don't have time to look because you say the seed has fallen on the wayside on the thorn side or on the things pertaining to the rocky soil and yet you want to come like the Simony who has come to take the gift of the Lord of our God and having no repentance yet you went along to start the Gnosticism thinking that believing truth or receiving truth is enough because with the multitude of his sorceries he had a great fear upon them and when Peter went along and he destroyed all the things there they were absolutely for him no gain therefore he comes with his money give me that gift what you have The people in the present Christendom come to pulpits to take the work of the pastor teacher to be replaced by their methods of sorceries to be called today. Inducing in the minds of them the fear of men, not the fear of the Lord of a God. If it were for the fear of the Lord of a God being introduced into their minds, they would certainly make them to write at least once the entire Bible. They would certainly lead them to be the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, every breath. They would certainly make them as Christ our Lord of our God said, if you servants will be equivalent to me, that's enough. Or like me, that's enough. Becoming like your master, that's enough. But in the church age, he says for us, you can do greater things or the works that I have done. Not symbolizing your miracles or healings or tongues, but symbolizing for us to understand the mental agony of his sufferings for Colossians 124 the part of which we have to pay 
We cannot endure the vicarious sufferings of my Christ as he drank the cup for us. It is for us to go back to the church and make every believer perfect and complete so that they could get every thought into captivity for Christ. And that's what Kathab meant to say. And the right duty of the pastor teacher is to describe them and to inscribe in their heart, mind and soul that they have to know what is the importance of Bible doctrine so that they could come and prescribe for more Bible doctrine and they could subscribe for it. That's the real word which meant to say Kathab. And the Hebrew word which meant to say Kathab, it says to for us to write. If the word of the Lord of God doesn't work in you to obey for his truth, never you will write. He would say, who is going to take that mammothum task? But it is Lord of God through us who is going to work for that mammothum task. If you are loyal enough to pay your life, when you will give your life to the Lord of God after you die, but Christ calls you brethren, Adelphas, when you have been dead in your old sin nature in Christ and buried in Him. And if ever you survive, you look for the food of the word of the Lord of God as your only survival for your inner man. As Jeremiah says, your words were found a Lord, so I ate them. And they gave joy to my heart. For a true believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we are reading the Hebrew word Kaya or Chaya, C-H-A-Y-A-H. The right relationship for every believer begins with the word of the Lord of God. And if you don't have that right relationship, then our life is waste. Your translations are the filth. Though you write for the first time in your translation, it is a filth. You have to come back to the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic the second time for that to make a bridge between there is no way from man to God as mediator Christ our Lord of our God. There is a bridge for you to pass through and this bridge is the Hebrew interlinear, Greek interlinear scriptures for those who are far off or not having master skill in Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Like in my case. The interlinear, the transliteration, though it may be having errors, We'll have to look into that essence and go back and look into that original word which has been given. For example, what we read in Job. Lord of God says, 3373 of Yare. Satan will say about Job, it is not 3373, it is 3372. One number being different, but you have a lot of meaning difference over there. 3373 calls for us godly fear. 3372 says, Obligated fear. It's like the emotional pattern of his consciousness say to, to say that if he doesn't do such and such things, he will be cursed. Therefore, he is fearing you, says Satan. But Lord of God says, no, he is having godly fear. And every believer says in Psalms 22-25, the super grace believer, they are being called as godly fear. And through this man, he is going to pay the vast woes through the church of our Lord of our God. And who they are, they will be given by God the Father. That's what John chapter 17 is all about. And we have a duty. The super grace believers or 3373 or the Yare believers who are having such fear to the Lord of our God. We have our responsibility. Number one, how you could be like that. How Christ our Lord of our God could call Job as his Yare fearing man. Because he said, though he utterly slays me, then I will trust in him alone. Can we say that? We haven't tested the good gift of Holy Spirit which has been given for us. We have been said, do not deceive it, do not crave it, do not squelch it. But aren't we deceiving him every day? Walking contrary to his rule, walking contrary to his magistrate rule, to be called more specific governing rule. The overall king who rules as a governor. His rule for the church age is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, daily carrying your cross and you yourself following my God the Father in heaven. Because it is not that someone will force you to come and follow or neither the way where we have been telling to you every day. 
opening our voice like a trumpet and blowing it for you be aware the enemy will come and attack and let not the blood upon you will be accounted for us therefore for which cause we are judging for you to give grace before judgment and we are saying for you be aware be aware be aware take heed take heed take heed It's a caution of warning for you to be aware of this great and unique spiritual life which has been designed for us in eternity past. This great and true unique spiritual life which did not exist earlier, neither will in the future. It's present for us. And once once you depart from this earth, either by death or rapture, because we, do, we even do not know when is our rapture, neither we know when is our death. Can you say to God the Father, I have fought a good fight? I have kept finished thy course I have guarded thy doctrine I have honored thy word above thy name and I have been there for me to fill all this the treasure of the heaven in me what are the details of this life that you want to enjoy about than the word of the Lord of a God The things when we go back and look on this earth, what do we find? Vanity upon vanity, says the scripture. And he concludes for us, those who fear Lord's word and to obey him, this is the ultima ever given for us in the church age. Fearing God and keeping his commandments. Why we need to fear our Lord of our God? Because He is the martial Lord of our God. And He is the governor of all the nations. Do you know if there is no sun, there is no life for you on this earth. If sun could be the daylight, and all will expect, particularly in my country, India, they go even to worship sun as God. If that is a creation, then how powerful will be my creator? And he says, I am the marshal, I am the governor, I am the ruler, I am the one who shall reign forever and forever. And I am given you my son so that believing upon him by in the being constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you can baptize into the burden of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you can be the so far believer so that I shall recount you before the presence of my Lord, even he quotes in Hebrews 2.13. It is we, we shall write Bible doctrine. It is we, we have to be there for him to understand that we are the scribe. It is we, when we read the Gospels very specifically in Matthew chapter 13, he says, the scribe being instructed by me. And instruction is again, matatoio, which is nothing but again, the teaching ministry of the Lama, what we go back and look in Deuteronomy chapter 4, which I shall teach. And here they explains again the one word Lama into two words of Greek Mantano. One we have read about discipleship. The other one is Didasco, the work of the pastor teacher. Making you disciples, making you disciples is what all about the Bible doctrine teaches for us in the church age. Making disciples. Not legalistical, holier than thou, self-moron, self-righteous believers or those people who think. By giving weekly ones a great offering, praying in the choir or singing in the choir. Paying monthly once your tithes to God and say, Lord, I'm bribing you, provide me this. And doesn't he say for us in Matthew 17, Lord, Lord, you call and do not do the will of God the Father in heaven. Have you at least known what is the will of God the Father in heaven for you? Bible is not a book for you to be having in the terms. As a guidepost, whenever you have emergency to look, whenever you require some mental courage to take from it, no. Bible is the very breath of your life, dear brethren. It is the food wherewith without Bible doctrine you cannot survive. If you do not know for what you have been kept alive, if you do not know the real purpose of you on this earth, then how you will serve my Lord, that great martial Lord of our God who has said, my word is enough. How many days you want to be like the weak Gideon who couldn't believe and he asks for a sign. And though Lord of a God is playing comics with him, that's what we can call. He gives a sign, again he comes the second day, show me this sign. 
again he gives him a sign. The great sign for him would be out of 31,000 he chose only 300 men for the battle and he delivered them. And the deliverance was also for such kind of a great thing to understand. The mind of this man is so much psychosomatic ill, Ill, Ill one or into the terms called as hypochondria, imaginary illness one. The soldiers of that empire went along to fight each other because of the sound which caused them to think. And who's going to induce that mind in them, the fear how it would come? It comes when Lord our God induces in them when his great glory will be blown. So when these 300 men just blew the trumpets, the angel of the Lord of God did the work to show how frail this man is, to show how great he might be in his own terms. But before Lord of God, he is dust. And this mind thinks that he can take against the mind's glory of the Lord of God and say that he can counsel the Lord's mind and say the writings what you have written and kept in your 66 books are having a lot of errors. He can go and tell this is also the same thing what we are having in our religion books. In our things we have seen greater things than this. And do you know who is that? From the beginning murderer. From the beginning the father of lies. He wants to duplicate. He has his doctrine of demands. He doesn't have the doctrine of the word of the Lord of our God. As we partake in the communion table, it has its own table of idol worship. Extreme moralness it wants to prove. Extreme legalism it want to teach. Extreme doing goodism it want to tell. Do you know how they call the pious minded men, the Pharisees and the Sadducees? And now a lot of our God would say, looking upon that sinner being far away from the temple, Lord forgive me, I am a sinner. Our Lord of our God wants to look upon such attitude, not upon the attitude of those Pharisees who says, I come weekly twice, I fast, I do this, I do that. And thinking that still the law could be existed in the church age, though Christ our Lord of God says in Colossians 2.14, it has been nailed unto the cross and Christ is the end of the law and they want to practice still the law. Why can't Torah be in our pulpits? The Torah is the divine establishment code, what we have in Codex 1, 2 and 3. And in this nation, Satan will not allow even that Codex 1, the spiritual freedom code, to be established. It has all mannerism of its clauses and conditions. But the origin is the Ten Commandments, what it has been given by Moses. We have that already in our action. This legalistical crowd, as the way how we can look in Acts chapter 15, some ministries from Jerusalem, they want to tell when in the church we have to practice the law. That was the yoke which was been put, said Peter. Let them be free from all mannerism of these evil things. Believe in Christ, get baptized, that's enough. We are not going to place upon their neck any yoke of the law. Because no one could bear it, no one could follow it. If one minute thing is broken, everything has been broken, saith our Lord of God, you haven't fulfilled, and no man apart from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came in the form of hypostatic union, could fulfill that law, and he put an end to the law. That doesn't mean the Old Testament scriptures are not needed. The Old Testament scriptures are the shadow, the reality is the New Testament. If there we can find shadow as a tutor could guide you for the reality. And if there is no shadow, then how you can know about the reality? And the 40 days of my Christ after his resurrection being seen by so many men in these 40 days, he wanted to inculcate into the minds of his disciples the prophet's teaching. And we find in the book of Habakkuk, as we find many things very exponentially expounded for us in a great mannerism of exposition of the world. But they were dull to hear the same things what Apostle Paul writes for us. As we go back and dig and look in the original Hebrew for each and every prophet, the way they have written the 12 minor and the 5 major. 
you will clearly understand how important it is for us to go back and look upon the first five books every word why they fail because they were, did not teach the Lord's mind and as he goes to write for us cursed is the place in the Hebrew school of thought if there are no proper Bible schools what they call as synagogues to teach the Lord's mind every day in those pulpits those places have been called as karam it is not how many churches you have karam and to say put for destruction or kept for destruction and if once in your place it has been written as karam where there is no proper exposition of the original languages of the scriptures in Hebrew Greek and Aramaic the root cause is by those so-called nominal pastor teachers I would come to serve for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. I would consider their belly to be their God. And who come to serve in fear of men, in fear of their family, not in the fear of the Lord our God. The great problem in our church age, which we are facing day by day, not the work of Lama being introduced in our pulpits day by day. Proverbs 8 34 when it says day by day those who wait upon my doorposts and to be more specific morning by morning in Zephna 3 5 when we read which goes to prove for us the attributes of the light of the word of the Lord of our God will be coming to expound us he wants to explain to us and he tests us moment by moment says Job 7, 18 and 19. The bag and rega. Moment by moment, not less even you can think the wink of your eye. More millionth of that moment by moment he examines you because he has given every morning the attributes of his light and have you been walking according to the integrity of the Lord of a God or are you waiting upon the master of the Lord of a God so that you can look your every detail of life by getting every thought into captivity for Christ or are you just letting it go to vain? How many days more you want to stay away not to fight a good fight in the Lord? What is your life? Is it worth to satisfy your father, mother, wife or children? Doesn't our Lord our God teach for us through our patriarch Abraham? Till the death of his father he did not call him. And then furthermore, it shows for us the details of life wherewith you are come here to satisfy I don't deny the responsibilities towards your father and mother honor your father and mother says the scripture neither you can call it as carbon so that you can say I have given everything to the temple so that I cannot take care of you no Christ our Lord of our God says the things that are to the world that has to be paid to the world the things that are to God that have to be paid to God that is Caesar to Caesar God to God And while you're paying the things to Caesar, be aware and take an example of Enoch, the way he walked with my Lord of our God. Nothing on this earth is far more important for you, though she may be the love of your century, or though maybe it's worth of million of dollars for you to sign that contract, not at the cost of Bible class, which you shall miss. Being taught for you every day in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and expounding your life to realize if you haven't become the tech non believers is John 1 to 12, the sons of God, the word, what we use there is tech non, day by day coming to Bible class. And if you don't believe that the word I will recount in the Hebrew is Psalms 22, 22, when you go back and look in the original, original Hebrew, it says for you, Safar, which is to become a scribe. Then how a lot of a God will count the praises of him in the great assembly of the Lord, the halal what you expound. And when we have in Psalms 22, 22 halal to sing praises, to shine forth his praises as a radiance of his glory, for which cause he has kept us to be the light and salt principle on this earth. In Zephaniah 2, 4 we have a great thing which says for us, the noon light, the double light, the first light, the grace of the Lord of our God, the second light through us for which he prayed in John 17, 21. 
not only to them but i have prayed even for others who would come to believe through the word of these disciples or the word of the christians to be called in the present christendom and they are the unbelievers so it is no longer the way how our lord our god will come practically and teach it is what we are his workmen on this earth it is what we are his vessel on this earth it is what we are to be an instrument of his voice to be put out provided when we are not deceiving the indwelling entering ministry of lord god the holy spirit neither grieving him nor squelching him and that's what many people don't understand about the simple logic He did not spare his own son on the cross to say and teach for us a lesson. My Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabatani. He was not sin, but he was made sin on behalf of us. And they are so pure on the cross that they left him. They couldn't see the sin. And that's the pain of agony what he prayed. Even the sweat became droplets. Not for the cross, not for the things that is going to suffer for you and for me, but for the thing that is lo is losing the fellowship with God the Father and Lord God the Holy Spirit. Because the way He has made this man to answer this angelic conflict in the battle of Eon, to pull down every stronghold that goes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine, and make you and me to be qualified to sit with him in his positional sanctification and in his experiential sanctification proving to honor his word above his name and making our lives to understand those who overcome him i will make him to sit at the throne what i prepared i will make him to become the pillar in the temple of my lord those who overcome and in this great battle of Ian, he wants everyone to win. Therefore, he says, they have kept thy word. John 17, 6. It's in the past tense. It's no longer in the times where you can think, you can enjoy the time on this earth. Therefore, 1 Peter 4, 2 writes for us, the rest of your time, spend it in the fear of the Lord of our God, trembling at his word. And lest you shall forget the promises of the Lord of God to apply to your life and be the representative of that great martial Lord. Such a great martial Lord has called you and me in the church age. Though we don't deserve anything for it, neither we can work for it, neither we have earned about it. By grace he has chosen us. Let us be at least qualified like that Ethiopian eunuch. The Gentile believers could be called as eunuchs. But they turned to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as Utopian eunuch came to say, what is going to hinder me to take baptized in the water? He did not have a double mind to say, okay, what Philip has said, has told, let it be, but I have to go to pay the woes in the Jerusalem temple, I'll go and pay. No, he was into firm mind and that's the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It will take completely in you to take the U-turn. The Hebrew word shuv meant to say to take a complete U-turn. And that's what the failure of the Lamentations 2.14 about the prophets. Like the plant could take into the roots of the soil, so they have taken to perceive insipidity. And they are pursuing life. And Lamentations 2.14 teaches to us how they have been becoming in that manner. And the root cause for that was the failure of the pastor teachers during that time to teach every day Bible doctrine. So it is today in our pulpit. As the plant takes into the soil and perceive lies and show for them insipidity and forgot to expose gala that's what the word is gala to expose the stark nakedness of your sin the avar nature when lord god the holy spirit teaches to you it will come to realize for you to understand that how sinning men we are in christ 
You may say, no, I don't sin. You may say, I will come and attend the church every day. You say, I have been not like the unbelievers, being fulfilling the lustful patterns of their roles in nature. You may say, I am doing this, I am doing that. But do you know what is your great sin? Learning not Bible doctrine, learning not the will of God the Father and deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Deceiving, I have told an example in Acts chapter 5, Anani and Sapphira. It was not that they should come and give everything. It was according to their free will, their evolution. But they acted as if they have given everything by keeping something apart. The first sin ever recorded for us in the church. Then you will find in Acts chapter 6 the divisions, serving tables rather than serving the living word of the Lord our God. A fight among the Hellenites and the proselytes who have been converted to become Christ. But whereas we find in Acts chapter 5 the great sin, the first sin, deceiving, it's not lie. The Greek word calls to deceive, to deceive, to deceive. So you may say, I haven't sinned. Do you know how you're sinning? You should be the scribes, are you? You should be making disciples for the one whom he gave five talents. Don't go to think it's singing, dancing or prophesying or doing this or doing that. No. To the one whom you have given five talents, count it as five disciples. That five disciples should multiply five into five, twenty-five disciples. Making them disciples is number one priority. And that's what he says, you are deceiving him. The real potential given for every believer is far more superior than the way how they can think in their own imaginations that it's not possible even to be calling them as saints. But Bible calls you're not just a saint. He calls for you to give... Have, he calls for you to realize being given power to call God the Father as Abba Father as Christ our Lord our God called him Abba Father. And he makes you to become the Technon sons. Far less you can think I have, cannot be qualified as a saint. And these things are not possible if you are not burying yourself in Christ after knowing my Christ. Far less you can say my life is hid with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. And that's the test what we have constantly. Do you know your roles in nature? And Satan's greatest pleasure in us is to have that old sin nature. Therefore Christ our Lord our God was not born in old sin nature. He was free from old sin nature. He was a virgin birth. And apart from him whatever we find in the church age or from the patriarchs till even to the last one in the millennium they are born in the old sin nature. My Lord Christ birth is eumic. The name of Yahweh Elohim is eumic. The rule of our Lord of God to say, Mashal, that he shall be the governor of all the nations, it is eunuch. And the work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in us to be the witnesses of the truth. To be shining like the light principle, to be the salt principle. It's not that constantly open up your mouth and teach, but your divine, holy manner of walk of life will certainly provide them. And the unbelievers should look upon us to know Christ. Look and read the example of Mother Teresa. She did not go to preach the gospel, she only proved the love. The impersonal love, because she had the unfailing love of the Lord of God, or the unconditional love of Christ. Doesn't 1 John 4 teaches for us, this is the love that we shall pay? What you shall do, lay down your life to your brethren, lay down your soul to the brethren. And don't you know how we can lay down? Because we have overcome the world. How you can overcome the world? Our faith, what it is. Believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have overcome the world. What a simple fact it is. It's not just that we quote, not just make a paper and try to preach about these things. Just imagine, believers have overcome the world. What is there in this world? Lust of flesh, lust of eye, pride of life. In the Greek it goes, epithumas of your flesh. 
and the epithuma in the Greek goes to say the pathos condition of your soul the pathos is nothing but the diseased condition of your thinking Lord our God wants to remove that diseased condition of your thinking by inculcating in you the alive and powerful word and when we are having our relationship with Lord God the Father through his word for a great extension in the Lord's mind then what it is that can hinder you dear brethren remember we are serving the true consuming jealous fire the living Lord of a God the only monon alathenian theon the only true Lord of a God to add for it anything could be the only Zao Monon Alatanian Tian the only alive alive it is not Bios but Zao the only true Lord of a God whom we serve that's what Peter got into position in the book of Acts he has seen the resurrection Christ he was been forgiven and therefore he says, Satan wanted to sift you out, but I prayed for you. When you convert, come and strengthen your brother. And that's what he did. They counted worthy for the suffering of the Lord of God, though the Roman soldiers were being taken care of by the, by the chief priests of that time of Pharisees and Sadducees. And dear brethren, do you know what it is? If we are not able to give number one priority, to learn Bible doctrine never you will know what is this true life in Christ the Zao life in the Lord the alive and powerful life for us if we live like Christ if we die great profitable for us therefore dear brethren as we were looking upon the Hebrew word Chaya we shall look again the explanation of it but after a word of prayer Infinitely Divine Holy Father, Yahweh El Elyon Elohim, we are thankful for this privilege which you have given for us. As we are going to study these things, enlighten us to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn, not only to peripeta or in Sophia wisdom, but also to stir I calm, march, in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, to learn the apocalypti of Epinosis knowledge. In Christ's name we pray, Father. Amen. So, for a believer, the true life begins with the word of the Lord of a God. Deuteronomy 8 2 through 4. The 40 years they have been called to come to follow my Christ in the wilderness. The garments were not waxed, neither their feet was not been collapsed. And what we look, the feet being not collapsed, it meant to say for us that no hindrance for you to come to Bible class. The physical manna, no matter what, every morning they have to go. If it were a little bit sunlight, it would just disappear. So no matter however the details of your life might have caused your feet to get into some sort of diseases so that you cannot walk or get amputated. Yet then you should go for a collection of your manna. And that's what it is. They learned, though their feet, their, their feet got, did not get collapsed. So today we apply that to our principle. No matter what, you have to come every day to Bible class. Though there is a million dollar deal, you just throw it out before the infallible and inherent word of the Lord of our God. Because the treasures of this world, what you're going to, what you're going to earn and preserve. Here robbers and moths will eat off. But the treasure of the heaven, what we're going to put, there is no deception over there. There is no any way you could be losing it. Therefore, Bible doctrine says, where is your heart? There is your treasure. Where is your treasure? There is your heart. See, if our treasure is in Bible doctrine, this great jewels of every word given to us, every Greek word, every Hebrew word, expounding it and learning the truth and understanding our lives based upon that, what a great principle it will be for us rather than looking upon our translations. Change to understand the course of life. 
not just making you going to church weekly once will qualify you you have to be the techno believer the importance of kneeling down and writing the bible if you have strength if not at least writing the bible once in your entire life making for the second time to write in the interlinear mediator between god and man like that man like that way it is for us and those who are born in hebrew or in the terms of greek and they have known the language if they would master this language how great it would be and the third thing when we go back in the original hebrew greek and aramic we are entering to look the lord's mind what did he really intended in the case of 3373 of case of job and what satan says 3372 and yet our lord our god will come upon in grace for you to say at least tomorrow he will come and he gives you warning discipline to wake up he gives you intense fire stage of discipline if you don't wake up the five cycles of discipline being explained in leviticus 26 and if you don't come to realize in those terms he gives you sin unto death. Is it necessary for you to die sin unto death in your sicknesses, in your weaknesses? How many days more you want to be in casualty department? And yet you say, I am serving the Lord. Come back and look into this battle of Eon, how our Lord of God has designed us. He called us to be immortal till the work of my Christ, our Lord, our God has been done on this earth and you could be like immortal the way how Apostle Paul believed till the work of my Christ could be done on this earth by daily doing Lord's will. If ever you survive, it is for Lord's will. The infallible and inerrant word of the Lord, our God is so alive and powerful. It will certainly empower you to be constantly alert to know from where and to pursue from where you are falling down by giving your thoughts to the things of this world and not able to get every thought into the knowledge of Bible doctrine and how they have been looking in the terms of this world not able to look the real infallible and inerrant word of God which is your life therefore dear brethren Deuteronomy 8, 2, 3, 4. Applying for us even to collect today our spiritual manna daily. It gives for us in that Hebrew word, kaya. And that's what we shall read in Psalms 22, 27. They shall live and their heart rejoice forever. For eon and for eon. Even in the unforeseeable thing, their hearts rejoice. Because they have found in the Lord of our God the true life. They have been built in the true life. And this Hebrew word, Chaya, gives for us to understand that to live, to exist, to enjoy the true life, to live a new life, to recover, to be well, to make alive, to enliven, to animate, to quicken, to pursue, to refresh and to rebuild. And they shall live because their heart has been filled with knowledge of Bible doctrine, not with morally evil activities of Jeremiah 79, but having in their heart the great work of being inculcated in the heart and soul to realize from the bottom of our hearts to understand the deepest innermost feelings. And in the spectrum of the entire Bible, human emotions being attributed to the heart when you're constantly available to look in the word of the lord of a god being living in that word then your entire human emotions because doctrine calls about the thinking but in fact indeed we do have our emotions the five facets of the soul what we looked mentality volition emotion norms and standards and consciousness even you have the figure of emotion and this entire emotion after believing in the Lord and growing up in His grace through His word. Because if it is not His word through His grace, then certainly there is nothing for us on this earth. So our entire emotions, getting into captivity for Christ every thought, 
to look and to understand the Hebrew idioms which have been used for the heart, which have been called to build the wisdom and understanding which constantly reside in our heart, and to have that perceptive nature. And if we are not able to look upon that because of the word of the Lord our God given to us to think, then certainly never you will realize that the true life comes from a right relationship with our Lord our God. And you haven't yet lived a life that could come being away from the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Deceiving Him. You may say you are not deceiving, but certainly you are deceiving because the intended inculcation of Bible doctrine to conquer the Bible from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, if it is the Lord's mind for us to conquer it, right? and if it is His will for us to understand about it, and if it is His will that every believer should become the scribe, if it is His will that every believer should be the tech non-believer, if it is His will that the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of those adult sons in the Lord, how could we just let go? If you are not able to perform the will of God the Father on this earth, will He not call you workers of iniquity? If it is His will that we have to write a copy of the law and keep with us, as in Deuteronomy 17, 18, but now applying to the entire Bible, from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 20 to 21, and what it is that our Lord our God will call you as scribe, you may think Christ our Lord our God has written it or what? When we go back home, we shall ask our Lord, our God. And what we preach, the word says, what you do, that you preach. He might have returned, and he, he should have returned. Therefore, he says, I will make you every scribe. The 20 years of his life, whether there may be many documentaries, he was in my country, India, or this or that. And not worry to waste our time to think. But we walk by faith. We are not like the way how Thomas was. Until as I put my finger in his thrusted part of the body, then only I will believe. He said, those who believe me, without examining, they are more blessed than those who believe me by observing. So we certainly believe if Christ our Lord our God has written, then only he will make for us to preach. And we shall find in one of our things pertaining to his life. When we go back and look, when our Lord our God will reveal that for us. But we dogmatically and emphatically affirm the fact, if Christ our Lord our God says that there should be every scribe, and in his messianic psalm he says that the so far believer is the one who is going to be a scribe, then certainly he should have written the Bible. Because he is the author of the Bible. That's another logic. But we are telling, in this humanity of his flesh, though he might have not entered that holy of the holies, the Shekinah glory, he might have written the Bible. Therefore he says, have you not read, have you not read, have you not read? And when we get back home, we can ask our Lord our God to reveal that while we are still in this earth. Or we can ask our Lord our God in the 20 years of his life. Are we prepared for the ministry? And in today's Christendom, it is not that what you go and qualify in your pulpits, in the filth of your pulpits with the theological degrees, that you shall be called as a qualified pastor to the church. It is Lord our God who shall qualify you from the filth of these translations purify you into the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic because we are dealing with the Lord's flock we are not dealing with the flock of our own mind being made and based upon caste or creed or religion or race or social status it is the Lord's word that we come in the terms of his own flock which has been made being purchased with his own great precious blood. And he says, you shall not have authority in your own flesh. I have purchased you with a great price. Therefore glorify the Lord of a God in your flesh, through the Spirit which indwells in you. 
And the true life begins with the right relationship with Lord of God. The forces of life are not to be seized by incantations. The choice between choosing life and death is ours. Lord of God is a gentleman, he shall never go away from it. Therefore, life is completely related to the word of the Lord of God. Our chaya has been absolutely related, completely related. Therefore, we gain our very life from the Lord's word. And that very life from the Lord's word, expounding that. Looking in Matthew 4, 4 again. What food are we mainly feeding our inward man with? And we say as Jeremiah, thy words were found and I did eat them, and thy words were unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Can we truly believe Colossians 3.16? And can we say, as the word says, that it has to be richly dwelt among us? Has it been richly dwelling? Certainly when the Lord said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word which goes out through the God's mouth, a lot God's mouth. It was not only the good answer for the temptation, but a deeply felt and practiced answer, which is him, the perfect man, who had fast, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, who had power to do something about it in his perfect will, but he waited upon God's word. And today as well we may have the temptation in our lives to be equally yoked with unbelievers to grieve the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, according to the standards of the lustful patterns of our flesh, the epithumai of the flesh, the epithumai of the eye, and becoming vagrant bragadakai. These things may be great for you, but the word of the Lord our God teaches for us. Our entire life is purely dependent wherewith we should be upon God's word. What the word says, that's the ultima. We are not here to experience or experiment it. We are here to believe and receive. If we have been set to put upon the new clothes at the moment of salvation by throwing out the old sin nature activities, which is endikai sunekai hosiet iste salatiya, we are not here to go and experiment it. We are not here to go and put it into practical life and see if I be like this, what it will be. If I be in the old sin nature, what it will be. Those are the men who don't really fear my Lord. And it's not just fear, but tremble. Tremble is nothing but shaking. If you see any sudden incident which could give you a shock, which can cause you that even your life would be shattered away like that. The way have you fear, that's what the Hebrew word meant to say for us, Kerad in Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. The one with a broken heart, the one with a contrite spirit, the one who shall tremble, tremble, literally shaking. For the believer's life, after believing in the Lord, every word of Him should be for us as a trembling one. Fearfully obeying Him, fearfully walking in His truth. Trembling, trembling, trembling. And we know very well, the greater of your life which you don't believe in the Lord's mind, certainly it will affect not to tremble, but to say, deny his word. Because Satan is constantly waiting you to sin. It's not just like the tree what we had in the, in the Garden of Eden. While they were going, they might have looked upon the tree or thought upon the tree. But that all sin nature greater than the tree is in us. Getting one thought out of the word of the Lord of our God, not depending upon his word, will certainly make you to enter into lies. Will certainly cause you to not to believe the truth. And will certainly make you to realize that you are about to fall. 
And if you have been tempted, don't say you have been tempted by God. Lord of a God is not a man who tempts you. It is the evil that is in you which is going to tempt you. Be aware of that evil. Look upon the Lord's mind. Consider upon his beauty. And walk in the fellowship of the truth. So in his perfect will, he always waited upon Lord God's word. And what is the lesson for us? It is to be occupied with the word of God. Not only to be richly filled by it, but to live by it. And if you're not able to live off it and to wait for it by keeping it, by obeying and walking only in the light of it, then certainly you're going to walk a walk of life that is absolutely life. It must not only be a guide or a map upon which we look in case of hesitation or when we feel we have lost our way, nor should it be suddenly looked into after many years away from it to seek the will of God for some great questions, a will that one never learned to know, love and submit to, but it must be a constant lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path, a guide at every step, moment after moment, so that truly, like my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ during the days of his flesh, Hebrews 5-7, we would live only by the word of God. This is the food we need for life at every breath but not merely for intellectual growth or to have the reasonings with the debaters of this world but to act on it practically therefore luke 11 28 says blessed are they who hear the word of the lord of god and keep it follow it practice it and how great are they which have been prayed for us in John 17 and Ephesians 1 and Philippians 1 and Colossians 1. And when they have been prayed for us, let us look to the Lord to learn to live, if ever, only, only by the word of the Lord of our God. If not, there is no life for us. To be guided in everything, if it is only, only by the word of the Lord of our God. And in no way to try to justify our actions through it. And afterward, let us pray, pray for this blessing. For in the word of the Lord of God is the real power. Living by every word which goes out through my Lord's mouth. And that's the Chaya. Our right relationship begins with the word of the Lord of God. Our life has been called to be inculcated by the word of the Lord of our God. And how many days more you don't want to have to realize that we have the sperm of Christ. And if we have the sperm of Christ, our so far will, where we have to declare the name of the Lord of our God, the praises of him among the midst of the brothers, and we have to pay, say Psalms 22, 25, the great verse of all time which says one among the great from with you that is what God the Father John 17 11 the praise of me the hilla the quality describing about the Lord's work and deeds the praiseworthiness of him in the assembly the kala of his word which is called Ecclesia today the vast woes that we have to pay and that great vast woes which is nothing but to reach MGG the woes of me which says nedar or nada, that is John 17, 6, to keep his word. Those are the words which we have to keep and to honor so that a woe of spiritual devotional love in the church age, in the kinekatesis of the church age, a love of spiritual devotional love, what a privilege it would be. A spiritual devotional love and so that in front of the other half neged not neda but neged which is in harmony with the things pertaining to the performance which is nothing but the church the wife of Christ and he shall pray that in front of through whom through those who are the fearing ones and 
these fearing ones are nothing but Yahweh, 3373 crowd, the super grace believers. And they shall hit the humble ones, Anal, the saintly one, the humble one, the depressed ones in the word of the Lord of a God. The time could be every believer in the church age like the Jeremiah weeping prophet. But they have become like Hananias, the one who rebelled to say, Lord of a God has spoke to me to say the yoke of wood has been free. And Jeremiah says to him in chapter number 17 or chapter number 22, where we get it. It would be better for our Lord of God to set us free. But since their hearts were not free, they became the false prophets. And they loved to listen to false prophets. And at the end he said, to this year you shall die. It is not the yoke of wood upon you, but it is the yoke of iron upon your necks. So it is today. They should be depressed like Jeremiah, weeping prophets, because the people are perishing by not knowing the truth. But they come the false teachers like Micaiah. The way have he said the truth, yet they believe the 430 false pastors. And yet he ended up in death. In today's Christendom, dear brethren, if every believer doesn't love to come to understand the knowledge of Bible doctrine, they're going to lose it forever. The time for us to be the communicators of the Lord's mind, the time for us to kneel down and write the Bible, the time for us to become his scribes, the time for us to be filled with the knowledge of Bible doctrine as the waters, as the waters covers the sea. we love to look but in the present time for every believer conquering the Bible it is a time for us how long you want to grieve and squelch and deceive the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit how long you want to pay rituals rather than reality how long you want to justify the way of your actions which is in not accord with the Bible doctrine, thinking that that is Bible doctrine and not expounding them in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and not able to make them disciples. How long you want to feed them with the filth of your translations. And how long you want to make them to die sin unto death. If you don't properly blow the trumpet, though you are blowing the trumpet, if you are not able to teach them from the basic fundamentals, then what is your life? Dear brethren, it is better for us to die than to live a life of lie. And the greater the time you spend not teaching the Lord's mind, and making them to be aware that we have to be constant, constantly like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, and proclaim them the truth. That's what the things pertaining to the humble ones, Anav, the saintly, the humble, the depressed ones. And they shall be satisfied. They shall be satiated. They shall be the halal to praise. And they shall be the one inquiring day by day, Darash, and inquiring to recover, to be well off. Only the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could produce in you that character to inquire, because it has not been revealed by the flesh and blood of this earth, but by the Spirit of the Lord of God to give you that inquiring process. And he shall live. He shall live, that's what Chaya we have read, to refresh, to rebuild. He shall live the true life of your heart, the heart which comes from right relationship with Lord God Almighty. And that heart of him will be for future. Dear brethren, this great unique dispensation of the church age demands that you take a U-turn like that Utopian you like. 
rather than having a double mind to say let me follow this and then I will go and follow and think of what Philip said though we might venture into the wild olive plant being engrafted imputed into it let us be aware that though we have been taken into the terms of that engrafted wild olive plant into the original olive plant and it did not spare the original branches of that olive plant and he cut them off and he placed us there being engrafting that through his word. Though we may enter like the Ethiopian eunuch, we shall be like the century Cornelius. The centurion who waited upon the Lord's mind to do the righteous will. And from there on many Gentile believers followed the ministry of the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, believing upon it. So shall it be for us. And if you are not able to look, then it is your life. Have the decision nature like the way how Ethiopian you look at. Come back today for Bible class. Take up your cross and come to Bible class every day. Follow Him. Look upon the Lord's mind every day and follow Him. Nothing on this earth for us to see the things that are on the above is far more important then you can think the things on this earth are very, are very much important to look. The things that are of the above, we look upon that. The anno, the high calling of the Lord's mind, that's what we have been here, kept for the Lord's mind. Think over these issues, dear brethren. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. We have our marshal, our Lord, our God with us the one who reigns and rules forever he has chosen us to be for the praise of his glory in his grace and how it is that we can let go by not having a right and true relationship with that great Lord God the Father for which cause he has made us to be alive on this earth and learn his mind his will every breath that you take the grace of the Lord our God being bestowed upon us. If we are not able to make it up to the standards of the Lord's will, you're going to lose it forever. Your life is not worth. Think over these issues. We need to answer for every grace being used, every word of unworthiness not producing in you the character of Christ. Therefore, not many men to become preachers. You have a tough time. We are not worried about the double honor. We are worried about Lord's honoring His word. We are happy with what we are. We are content with what we are. To expound His mind every day is the only burden laid down upon our shoulders. As long as we have breath in our nostrils. Think about these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my That is in itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth, for this were very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in the Living Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, not worry besides nature, the entire Holy Ghost will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord our God, no matter how the the chips may fall. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Either you want to be in the martial power of the Lord our God, or you want to enjoy the details of this life by seeking your pleasure in the things pertaining to this earth. 
and not able to give number one priority to get every thought into captivity for Christ and nothing on this earth is more important for you than to gather the Lord's mind the daily portion from the golden pot of his will you may gather your physical food you may gather the needs of your physical flesh and if you haven't gathered today the spiritual food of the Lord you're not having the right relationship with our Lord our God and you're just worshipping him for the sake of your needs on this earth as first Corinthians says how worst believers we are only for the sake of the details of this life we believe upon him to be as our God and not to consider the things pertaining to your eternal life the things pertaining to your eternal life is a spiritual thought as a wife and husband every day morning make a decision to come to Bible class make a decision to write the Bible be corrected by the wife being corrected by the husband cross-checking each other and training your children as Deuteronomy 6 says when the time will come and they ask you Lord what are the things of the Lord God then what is your face to tell you should be in a place to tell them the mighty deeds of the Lord of a God but first not just referring back as a guideline but practically living of it living the Word of God not L-E-A but L-I-V-E I-N-G and that's what living into the Word of God how glorious and marvelous is our entrance into that world because of that great martial Lord of a God as 1st Corinthians 2 14 says leads us triumphantly at every place we go to spread the fragments of his knowledge through our lives through the holy man of life that we walk through don't waste your calling walk worthy of your calling we shall come back and continue tomorrow father what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word father we pray that lord god the whole truth and not in us by this tape which are given to us so the message of us to truly understand the lord it's not just to be conquer and inquire into the word but make our hearts to be constantly live the chaya life in the unforeseeable things which are given for us through the mystery doctrine and make our hearts to be constantly being rich in the word of the lord our god and to live in it and apart from that we don't have any other thing on this earth because sovereign lord the true health the true issue always is the word the true eyesight is the word the true life is the word as you said in proverbs 8 those who love me love life those who hate me love death so therefore father help us to constantly be in thy fellowship and what else we can ask O lord then to be one word grateful for thy grace being bestowed upon us and much more grateful for us and the privilege given to us to look upon grace upon grace in christ matchless peerless gracious name we pray father we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit and enlighten and challenge and bless them who have believed in my Lord to understand thy grace. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord.